hey. The topic I am going to discuss is power of a study. The power of a study is like the accuracy of a test. A study with high power is like a test that is accurate at detecting if there is a difference or effect. The null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis play an important role in power analysis. Null hypothesis, H0, represents the assumption that there is no effect or difference between groups. Alternative hypothesis, HA, represents the assumption that there is an effect or difference between groups. The power of a study is the probability of correctly rejecting the null hypothesis when the alternative hypothesis is true. In other words, it's the ability of the study to truly detect an effect or difference between groups, if one actually exists. For example, if a study is designed to test the efficacy of a new medication, the null hypothesis would be that the new medication is no different from a placebo. The alternative hypothesis would be that the new medication is more effective than the placebo. The power of the study is the probability of correctly finding that the new medication is more effective than the placebo, if it actually is more effective. High statistical power occurs when a hypothesis test is likely to find an effect that exists in the population. A low power test is unlikely to detect that effect. For example, if statistical power is 80%, a hypothesis test has an 80% chance of detecting an effect that actually exists. Errors in power studies. Samples sometimes show effects that don't exist in the population, or they don't display effects, that do exist. This is due to error in the power studies. There are two types of errors that can occur in power studies. Type 1 error. And type 2 error. Type 1 error also known as a false positive, is when you reject the null hypothesis, the idea that there is no difference or effect, when it is actually true. This means that you believe that there is an effect or difference when there is actually none. For example, in a medical study, the null hypothesis is that a new drug is no better than the current standard treatment. If the study finds that the new drug is better, but in reality it is not, this is a type 1 error. The chance of making a type 1 error is usually expressed as a probability, known as the significance level, alpha. The most commonly used significance level is 0.05, which means that there is a 5% chance of making a type 1 error. Type 2 error, also known as a false negative, is when you fail to reject the null hypothesis, the idea that there is no difference or effect, when it is actually false. This means that you believe there is no difference or effect when there actually is one. For example, in a medical study, the null hypothesis is that a new drug is no better than the current standard treatment. If the study finds that the new drug is not better, but in reality it is, this is a type 2 error. The probability of making a type 2 error is known as the type 2 error rate, or beta. The inverse of the type 2 error rate is the probability of correctly detecting an effect, known as statistical power. For example, if the type 2 error rate is 0.2, then the statistical power is, 1 minus beta, 1 minus 0.2 equals 0.8, meaning that you have an 80% chance of detecting an effect, if one exists. Power is equal to 1 minus beta. Both type 1 and type 2 errors are trade-offs in any hypothesis testing study, and it is important to consider the consequences of both errors when designing a study. A high level of power reduces the risk of type 2 error, but increases the risk of type 1 error. On the other hand, a low significance level reduces the risk of type 1 error, but increases the risk of type 2 error. It is up to the researcher to determine the appropriate trade-off between the two errors based on the specific research question and the potential consequences of each error. In calculating sample size, power analysis considers various factors including the effect size, the standard deviation of the population, the desired level of precision, and the desired level of significance, such that the study will have sufficient power to detect an effect, if one exists. Sample size determination of simple comparative experiment, using power analysis. A simple comparative experiment is a study that compares two groups in order to determine if there is a difference between them with respect to some outcome or response variable. 
The goal of the experiment is to determine if the means of the two groups are significantly different from each other. To determine the sample size in a simple comparative experiment, several factors must be taken into account, including significance level, power, population standard deviation, and desired difference between the means. The commonly used formula is two sample, t test formula, n is equal to 2 into z1 minus alpha by 2, plus, z1 minus beta whole square, into sigma square, by d square, where, n is the sample size. z1 minus alpha by 2, and z1 minus beta, are the z-scores corresponding to the desired level of significance and power. Sigma is the population standard deviation. D is the desired difference between the means of the two groups, effective size. Example. A study comparing the effectiveness of two different treatments for reducing pain in patients with chronic back pain. Find the sample size using two sample t-test. Let's say the researcher wants to perform a two sample t-test with a significance level of 0.05 and a power of 0.8. The population standard deviation is estimated to be 10 and the desired difference between the means of the two groups is 2 units of pain reduction. Significance level, alpha, is given as 0.05. Power, 1 minus beta, is given as 0.8. Standard deviation is 10. And effective size, d, is 2. By applying alpha and beta values we can find the z-scores. On applying all the values in the formula, we will get the answer as 392. So the sample size for each group should be around 392. Power analysis is usually done using software tools rather than formula methods. Tools like G-Power, and Query Advisor, and Pass make it easy to perform power analysis and calculate sample size. All you have to do is input the necessary variables and the software will provide you with the results. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give us a like. Subscribe for more videos and also share with all your pharma mates. Thank you.